Well, how lucky am I? Most people, they watch a thrilling event like that. They text their friends. They talk to their partner, whatever. I get to talk about it with Donovan Bailey, of all people. I'm still buzzing out here, Donovan. That was so thrilling. I loved every second about it. And now let me ask you about what we just witnessed. Noah Lyles walked the walk. He talked the talk. Your initial reaction to what he just did in there. Dude, I, I mean, I, I'm, I was surprised. I absolutely was surprised. I mean, big, big, huge respect to Noah Lyles for executing his own race, staying in his pocket, uh, and doing exactly what he said he was going to do uh, and, and in, in winning uh, the Olympics. I mean, and, and also uh, getting a personal best. Uh, when you look at the differences in experience, uh, I had Kishane Thompson winning. I had him winning. I actually had him winning and running, uh, you know, 9-6 high, 9-7 low. For me, he's still the fastest guy there, but, you know, he's not the Olympic champion. He's 22. He's got a ways to go. But huge congratulations. Um, huge congratulations to Noah Lyles. And, and this is probably by far one of, the, one of the most technical races that you've ever seen just because of the differences uh, in all the athletes uh, that cross the line. Can we expand on that? Like when you say technical, what do you mean by that? Because I'm just sitting there watching it and I see, you know, the dudes running, <laughs> but you obviously have a different perspective. So what do you mean by that? Yeah, you know what? L listen, there, 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 there are three parts of the 100 meters. Someone like Kishane, who is obviously like uh, heads and shoulders up faster than the athletes that he's competing against, um, he, uh, his speed is way better for the first 30, right? And so when he gets the top speed, he has to learn how to relax and let the race come to him. Now, he did not allow the race to come to him, right? Noah Lyles is fantastic speed endurance guy. Obviously, he's good enough, he's, like he's a power speed guy, but he's a speed endurance guy. He knows when he, hits, get, when he gets the, the threshold of his speed, he can keep it. And that's what allowed him to kind of, it looked like he came from behind, but all he did was kind of maintain his, his, threat, his threshold uh, so he could, he could um, well, win at the line. Just curious, you know, no one's indifferent about Noah Lyles. Some love him, some don't like him. Where, where do you lie? Dude, I mean, listen, he's the fastest, he's the fastest man in the world. He's a world champion, um, and, and he's now the Olympic champion. He's an ambassador for my sport, which, which, which for me, you know, is, you know, stands above everything else. But Noah Lyles is fantastic uh, personality-wise and clearly uh, what he's doing on the track. I know this may be a, a tough question to answer, but what do you think Thompson's feeling right now? Most, including yourself, thought he was the favorite, fastest man in the world heading into this race. And I mean, it's like a photo finish, as close as it gets. Uh, it's about perfection. So you spend your entire existence, <laughs> as long as you're competing, thinking about the perfect race. It's the perfect start. It's the perfect acceleration phase. It's the perfect float, which is in the middle. And it's the perfect deceleration phase. So ultimately, I'm very certain for Kishane, he probably shouldn't be upset at, at anything that happened uh, because ultimately he can just go back and look at where he made a mistake. This is not boxing where someone can't come in and you know, gives you an uppercut you know, or, or slip a right hand or whatever. You know, this is something, this is a mistake that he made. And ultimately, I, I, I know his coach, uh, I know the group that they're from, and I know that they're gonna fix it. And, that, and that's really all it is. I mean, let's put it this way. If he had ran the same race that he ran in the semifinals and the finals, he would have ran, you know, 970. Yeah, I mean, I I'd love to see a rematch. Perhaps they could book it at the uh, Rogers Center uh, maybe around this time <laughs> next year. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm over it. Uh, by the way, before I let you go, Donovan, I'm moving on, I promise. Before I got a lot of hate for that, by the way, but I still really? have your back from now until the end of time. Thank you. Oh, of course. Oh, you're stirring it up. But don't worry, Donovan. I got your back. You're my guy. I love um, my brother. Before I let you go, a quick word on, on Andre de Grasse. Didn't qualify for the final. I got the sense yesterday that, um, you know, from talking to you, you probably were expecting some kind of result like this. What did you see from him tonight? Well, no. I mean, again, we're talking about power distribution and we talk about speed and endurance. Andre has been consistent all year. Thank God he's not injured. But he was just in tough. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, 993. Uh, was the last place guy to get into the finals. Ariel, he's a reigning Olympic 200 meter champion. He's beaten Bednarik and he's beaten uh, Noah Lass. So Andre, Andre is not gonna lay down, dude. That's what I know, right? I, if I know this about the kid, he's not gonna lay down. So, I mean, yes, the, the 100 meter is gone. Put that under the rug, who cares? Um, because he knows, he, he knows he's got the deuce coming up and, and he knows he can lay it down when it happens. 
Can't wait to see how that unfolds. Donovan, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it as always. Paris Tonight is brought to you by Smart Water.